So today I have a few of the most interesting axes that I have come across in recent years. This is the Forest Service Boys Axe Edition reissue from Council Tool. It is a two and a quarter pound head on a 24 inch handle remaining fairly faithful to the old Forest Service specifications with a couple of very notable changes. Um, I've had my eye on these axes for quite some time. Uh, Council Tool made the uh, had the contract for the Forest Service Boys Axes up until 2013. And after that contract was no longer uh, renewed, uh, they pretty much sold the last of their inventory to the general public. And then the future of this ax was uncertain up until 2015 when Omaha Knife and Tool um, spearheaded an effort to bring a one-time run of these axes back. Uh, Omaha Knife and Tool, um, it, my understanding is, is has now closed down uh, since the owner passed away li late last year. Um, but they spearheaded the return of these axes. And then I believe Whiskey River has uh, now done two runs of these axes, um, a, a first generation and a second generation with, uh, with some changes. Um, which I'll talk about. Now, um, originally these forest service axes were made out of 4140 steel, which is very tough, very durable. Um, the only thing I could maybe fault 4140 for is it doesn't, uh, it doesn't harden particularly, uh, particularly well, uh, meaning it, it will harden, but your rock well doesn't get uh, much higher than I would say maybe the low to mid 50s generally speaking um, which makes it great for a rough and tumble axe that you're going to throw in the back of the truck or hang in a uh, on a truck rack somewhere uh, you know throw in the corner of, uh, of of your shop whatever the case may be and uh, and just use it as a rough and ready tool um, now the forest service also uh, it is notable for having uh, very exacting specifications for their handles um, so all of their handles are, uh, are specced to have zero slope of grain, no run out, no bark inclusions, no knots, um, uh, just a generally straight grained perfect handle and, uh, and then a PVC wedge instead of poplar cut flush to the top of the ax head, uh, painted black and, and rough sharpened. Um, now what Council Tool has done is change the steel from 4140 to 1080 steel, meaning there is eight tenths of 1% carbon. Um, now that to me was very, very interesting because typically any ax that you're gonna find on the shelf or order online is going to have uh, carbon content between five tenths of a percent and six tenths of a percent. Uh, you know, you, you can find some that go a little bit lower. I think, uh, I think maybe Adler uses you know, 1045 steel or, or something to that effect in some of their axes or maybe 1040 steel, but it really doesn't get much lower than that. Uh, 1050 is about the, the lowest it goes. Helco uses 1050. Um, you know, I've, I've talked about this in another video, but the Swedes use 1055 or something very close to it. Council Tool uses 1060. So to go from, from that range, generally between 10, maybe call it 45 and 1060 to 1080 steel is fascinating to me. Now, the addition of the carbon, uh, it what it allows the, um, the manufacturer to do is produce a, a bladed tool that will be harder than steel with a lower carbon content. Um, generally with an ax, 1050 and 60 are great because it, it's a, it's a mid-range carbon that'll take a beating and the edge will be hard enough. Uh, but 1080 to me is very interesting because this is a boy's ax. What I wanted to do with this, what I want to do with this, you know, I want to do the limbing, I want to do the chopping, but I also want to be able to, you know, um, do some basic woodcraft when I'm, you know, out and about, maybe camping or, or kicking around somewhere. I want to be able to fashion something out of wood. And what a 1080 steel bit will allow me to do is is really have a keen edge that is is wonderful for all of the other tasks that I mentioned with the addition of being great for carving, great for, um, you know, cutting tasks. I mean, it'll, it'll never be a knife. Um, but uh, but it should be a wonderful all-around axe. Um,
And wouldn't you know it, I picked the uh, driest, toughest piece of red oak in the pile. So we're gonna take a little shortcut here. Oh, come on. Boy, that is nothing if not solid. Anyways, um, that took way longer than I expected. But um, this ax is so well balanced. It is so well balanced that, you know, I could, I could get up close, I can still get up close, or I can stand back and, and give it a wallop if I need to. So just a, just a wonderful, wonderfully balanced ax. Very, very nimble on this ax. I have um, absolutely nothing critical to say about this ax. Uh, I strapped it and that's it. I am very, very impressed with it. It held an edge marvelously, which is one thing I was very curious about because Council Tool is using 1080 steel for this ax instead of their standard 1060 steel or uh, 4140, which the original contract specifications for. But uh, I'm gonna guess this is probably maybe 22. See 25, there's a lot of slop there. 20, so I'm gonna guess this is maybe 21, 22, somewhere along those lines. I'd say got a, about a good two and a half minutes before one of the ghosts of the chickens comes to knock this over. And I could do this with a belt grinder or an orbital sander or what have you. Chicken box box, what are you doing, girl? But uh, I don't really feel like making the noise and creating the dust this morning. All right, I gotta feed this goat. Now this, uh, this ax doesn't need a whole lot of stonework, but uh, I do like to blend in and I am just about on my last drop of this Lansky. Come on. All right. Ooh, yeah, but it does, does give you a nice edge. Let's see if I can get some more of this honing oil. Ah, thought I had more left than that. Oh, there we go. So we'll get that all wiped down. And uh, I'm just gonna use that, um, that one stone. For this ax, it's already fairly sharp. Um, the one thing that I have really tried not to skip is honing because um, I think it really does toughen up your edge a lot. It is absolutely worth doing. So you can see that edge. If I would have taken this through the range of stones that I have, this edge would be nice and polished. And you wouldn't be able to see the scratches in the bit. Um, you can't feel them. Maybe very, very lightly you can feel them. 
So here's what we're left with. And I do like to just polish the bit on my pants to get that uh, whatever little burrs and remnants are left. That is a beautiful, beautiful ax, I have to say. The four service specifications are the reason for the paint coming, you know, clear out to here. They wanted that rust protection. But um, it sticks, and I really like the look of a blended, of a blended paint. Okay, so now I've got my uh, little brew here of Axe oils and all kinds of other good stuff. TM, toys. copyright. <laughs> No, none of that. So we're going to put that on the handle here. Oh, they're eating my glove? Yes. Okay. So we'll get this on there. This just gives it a little bit of color and a whole lot of durability. All right, so you can see just a little bit of color, but it's not a stain. And uh, there's going to be a whole lot of protection there.